We welcome in our co-host on this Friday morning, the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Good morning, Rob. Remember when we were kids uh, and on a beautiful day, the teacher would move outside under the oak tree and have classes? We should do that today as well. It's such a beautiful day outside. First of all, when you say when we were kids, you talk about like me and you being kids at the same time here, Bill? <laughs> when I was a kid. What are you kid. doing to me? <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> Height's shaking his head. Height's like, I'm younger than Rob. I don't even want to be in that conversation either. Yeah, that... Uh... That oak tree that you were under, they probably cut it down by the time I came along. <laughs> Where it fell down <laughs> naturally. Nasty storm. Yeah, let's yeah. welcome in Delegate Michael Hyde as well. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robert. It's good to be here. Beautiful day outside, though. We have got a That's lot. That's the point I was trying to make. <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> I'm three minutes in. I've lost control of the show already over an oak tree. Well, you're doing uh, better than normal, though, Rob. <laughs> Uh, we have got a lot to get to. Uh, yesterday, clearly a big day in the news, a historic day. We'll get to that all of the 835 segment with the Friday 5. Joe Ferretti will be in studio, not on the telephone. And uh, that's about uh, half an hour from now. But uh, before then, we want to welcome in our first guest of the day. City Councilman from Ward 1, Dennis Etherington, is running for re-election. Dennis, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good to have you here. Uh, Dennis, how many terms have you served? This, would this be your fourth one coming up? Uh, well, I've been on 16 years, so yeah, I guess it would be the, f no, the fifth. New, if I was to win this one, it would be the f fifth one. Fifth, yeah, you're yeah, completing your yeah. fourth term uh, right now. So let's uh, talk about why you want to be reelected to the position, Dennis. I enjoy it. Yeah, what do you yeah, enjoy about I, it? Well, I um, I'm retired from teaching and from coaching, and um, when I was my last seven years, I was the assistant principal at Eagle School, and um, there was an opening. Uh, the lady that was serving Ward 1 at that time on council took another job, and uh, the state said there was a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. So the council um, s sent out uh, word that, that they wanted uh, – letters of interest from anyone who was interested in, in serving. So Mark Baldwin lives up the street from me. So I asked Mark, what do you have to know or do to be on city council? And he said, basically, you just have to have a little bit of common sense. <laughs> and, and I asked my wife, I said, do I have common sense? <laughs> that's a fair question to ask us. I would never ask your wife that question. Well, I'm not sure that showed common sense. Well, well, she said, you married me, didn't you? <laughs> that's a great answer. <laughs> so, so I wrote a letter of interest, and apparently two others also, and the council selected me um, over the other two, and that was probably two or three months before that term ended. So then I had to run again in 2008, and um, I've won re-election since then. Um, and I, I just I just enjoy doing it. It gives me something to do, especially now that I'm retired. But Ward 1 is not a real difficult ward. What is the geography of Ward 1? What about, um, what's your all your Okay. Area? King Street... The south side of King Street over to and including Lowe's. Okay. Okay. And east as far as Winchester Avenue. Now, there's some jagged edges in there. Mm -hmm. um, then it also includes the gallery and Martinsburg Station. Okay. So that's basically Ward 1. All right, let's talk about your time in office. What are some of the things you're most proud of accomplishment-wise? Oh, well, I mean, if you if you look at the things that are going on in the city now, and that has happened prior to now, um, you got the the, the square, um, you got the, the uh, corridor, the rail, railroad uh, the railroad corridor, um, uh, the fact that the uh, the underpass has been redone, remodeled, if that's the word. Um, the one thing that people complain about this is when it rains, the underpass still gets flooded. 
But in all actuality, that's not the city. That road that goes underneath the underpass actually is the Department of Highways, the West Virginia Department of Highways. Mm -hmm. um, so we really don't have control of that. Um, let's see what that was. Well, right now we have a public works building going up, which is new. Oh, the police station. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the police station, state of the art, it's beautiful. It really is. Some people complain about it. doesn't meet the, what's the word, the facade of downtown, but it's a beautiful station. And it was completely paid for. There was no, uh, no, loans. no loans or anything like that. Um, but if you look at, at, at what's going on in, in Martinsburg now, um, I mean, we're growing. It's progressing. People complain about this or that, and I say, if you're not happy, you just have to remember, that's progress. The, the things that are going on is progress. Bill? Yeah, Dennis, you're also uh, the city treasurer, are you not? I am not. Oh, you were? I, but I, you were I was. I was um, probably maybe four or five years in a row, and then the council decided that they wanted to rotate it between um, between the councilmen that would be interested in serving. So I have not been the, count, uh, the treasurer uh, maybe for at least the last six years. Okay, okay. But, but you had, initially you were quite a bit of experience with a city treasurer. Uh, yeah, but that's not a difficult job. Yeah. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't require any... Uh, uh, what you would consider treasurer's yeah. jobs. Um, basically, all you do is go in and stamp checks. Now, when Mr. Karras was the mayor, he didn't have a stamp. He signed every check. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of checks. Mm -hmm. But um, and, and there's three people, I think, that, that have uh, the ability to sign the checks. That would be the city manager, the mayor, and the treasurer. treasurer okay. And um, now when I went in and did it, I, I used a stamp. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, there is over the last several years has been some friction uh, between the county and the city. Uh, has that been pretty much put behind us? What's the work, working relationship between the two now? You, you know, really, I try to get along with everybody. So I really didn't recognize a whole lot of friction between the the county and the city um well it got a lot of press <laughs> well yeah but but in my mind i was good with it with everybody and and everything now dennis in all fairness this is when bill was on the county commission he hated everybody in the city. <laughs> i remember those days he'd call everybody an sob walking down uh, yeah, the city streets I, I, especially Mike, I, the city. I've, I've got to put the record straight here <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we used to have a lot of joint city and county yes. council meetings, and that kind of fell by the wayside. I, I found it to be very useful. I think you own at the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we, uh, uh, with George Karras and uh, uh, taking the lead from the city, uh, uh, we met on a regular basis, and we did not take action jointly, but we talked things through. So there's a lot of communication between the two. And, that, and that's what's important. You know, and, you've got and, to communicate. And do you do that very much now? No. Yeah. And not I, really. I, I not really. I think that's a mistake. So. Me meeting of the minds. You've got to get the, the, uh, the heads together. And, and I really would not have a problem doing that. Yeah. So. Yeah. You should get the delegates in there, too. Represent the city. Mr. Height, speaking of delegates, how are you? Yes, good. So, Dennis, uh, a lot of people are, are seeing the revitalization of Martinsburg, downtown Martinsburg. Right. and And good it, it's really needed that and and a lot of people are still calling for even more change and you don't necessarily represent change you've been there for 16 years so how would you respond to those individuals who want change in martinsburg um but see you as somebody that is part of maybe the old guard how would you respond to those people and say i i represent change as well i i i'm not against change really um, but I am conservative. Um, things can be good with change. And like I said, that's progress. I'm not against progress. 
But with progress, you have to realize that there are some things that's going to happen that you might not like. Mm -hmm. But once again, that's progress. And one of the big things I hear in the city um, from from residents in the city uh, is the new the rain tax and and how exorbitant that is in in the city. Um, and you hear it, you hear about it countywide. Um, but it, it seems to be even higher in the city. How would you respond to those individuals who are complaining about the rain tax and sort of explain what that, that, that fund does for the city? First of all, it's not the city. It's not the county. It's the federal government, the Environmental Protective Agency. They're the ones that are requiring us to have... We've been recognized as a what is it, MS4 um, municipality, and they're the ones that have told us that we have to have um, a department set up that takes care of stormwater. So we actually have our own stormwater department now. At one time, we didn't have a stormwater department. And um, Jeff Wilkerson, of Public Works, Steve Knipe, who was utilities, and I think there's one other person, would take time away from their duties as directors of those departments, and um, they're the ones that did what was needed as far as stormwater is controlled, is concerned. Um, but now we have a separate stormwater department, and those people handling that themselves. Now, the monies that's collected from the stormwater, um, it's a stormwater, I don't want to say tax, because that's not a good word. It's a fee. Mm -hmm. um, that's used to support that stormwater department, um, to pay the salaries of those people that are, are working there. I think there's three, maybe four people in that department, and uh, to support their needs as they um, recognize them. What do they do? You know, to be honest with you, I can't answer that. <laughs> I, I, I really... And, and here's... I know, I see, I see... But that's a perfect answer, because when the county was going through this, it's, what was this, 10 years ago? Uh, five years ago? More I, than that. More? Uh, Close to about It's been since years. I've been hosting here, yeah. so, mm -hmm. so some point of 2010 <laughs> forward, when this got implemented at the county level... The same questions were asked, and the only answers we could get was, well, the fees are collected to support the salaries of the people that do the work. I'm like, what do they do? We don't know. Well, what does the tax go to? To pay their salaries. It's a, it's a dog chasing his tail here. Yes, yeah. yes. It is. I, I wish I could give you a, a better answer, um, but I can't. Ma right. Maybe maybe, um, maybe Andy Blake, the city manager now, would be able to answer that. I, I, I really don't know. And I think that's everybody's complaint that this was a fee enacted to pay a salary to pay and create a bureaucracy <laughs> that wasn't really needed, but was was uh, mandated by the federal government. There you go. You know, and uh, but, you know, and my question and maybe not I mean, you probably don't know, but my question has always been why Berkeley County? Why Martinsburg? Why not Charlestown? Why not Jefferson County? When when their streams and their runoff is going into the same uh, literally rivers flows and, right and down three forty. That right. that is a question that has come up. Um, like I, I've gone into Andy's office, it hasn't come up during the meeting or anything, mm -hmm. but just sitting there talking, it's come up. Why why isn't Ranson? Why isn't Charlestown included? as a MS4 municipality. And, and I don't, I, I I'm, I'm wondering why, one, uh, whether it be the city of Martinsburg or Berkeley County hasn't sought uh, legal action against the federal government and saying, hey, there's something just not, just not fair here when, you know, whether we took money way back when to become MS4 or not is irrelevant. You're telling us we have to do this because of the runoff into the Chesapeake, and there's all these other places that have runoff into the Chesapeake as well, and yet they're not mandated to have the same the same bureaucracy. So I, 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 I don't know how you answer that, I, I, Dennis. But I, all I can it, say is I agree with what you're saying, and, and it's been discussed. Now, there's uh, 
cities, municipalities in Pennsylvania, Virginia. Well, I can see Virginia because they're right down the bay. Sure. Um, Maryland, of course. Um, those three states, I believe, are the ones that have the uh, MS4 title. Um, I don't think there's any others. But, but really, what you're saying, I agree with because I don't have an answer to that. I don't. But, like you said, it's mandated by the federal government. Right. Why Why does a city and the county each have a separate stormwater management? Why cannot these functions be combined? Well, they're separate governments. You yeah, but we do other things jointly. Uh, animal control, for example, we do uh, jointly. There's, there's a list of several things that can be done. Uh, at least cooperate. You don't need two independent bodies. I I. Once again, I can't answer that. Yeah. I don't know. Bill, animal control might be different, though, since this is a federal program. The paperwork might be different. Yeah. I. We we joined the MS4 voluntarily, and this was done in the early 2000s. So this is your fault, Bill. No, this is before <laughs> okay. my watch. Right. Before my watch. But there was some justification. We were getting some benefits from it. Uh, and I'm fuzzy now about do the benefits outweigh the disadvantages? I can't remember that. As far as the, if in the county, why they, uh, why there is a rain tax, if you want to call it that, uh, is that the, the responsibility was under the sewer department. They had to pay for it some way. Uh, if the sewer department, their only source of funds were their customers, and it had been unfair for those customers on the sewer lines to pay for function throughout the county. So that's why they decided to do a county-wide fee or tax. Well, let's get back to Dennis yeah. here uh, as he's campaigning for re-election. Dennis, what are some things you'd like to see accomplished during your next term if you are so lucky as to win another term? Well, uh, I really um, i am happy with the way things are going, to be honest with you. I think that uh, Andy Blake has... Uh, gone into his new position with uh, uh, both feet on the ground. Um, now, now, Mark, in my opinion, Mark Baldwin was the best city manager in the state of West Virginia and in the tri-state area. I think Andy is on his way to that same title. What Andy brings to the table that Mark wasn't able to is that Andy is not just uh, have a degree in city government, but he also is a lawyer. He, he has a degree in law, mm -hmm. and that, I believe, is going to help uh, an awful lot. Um, one thing that does bother me um, here in the city is we have so many people that do not pay the garbage or fire fees. And what's done at this point, as far as I know, is um, they just put liens against their property uh, that they're not paying the garbage or fire fees for. And that's about as far as it goes. I'd like to see something where those folks um, have to pay or are penalized in another way. Um, Garnished wages? So what whatever. Looking at? I don't know. Right. I, I don't have an answer for you. I do know that there are even folks involved in government here in the county that... The city or the county? Both. Both? Yeah. The, well, the city is part of the county, so when I say sure. county, it includes mm -hmm. everything, who have reneged on their garbage and fire fees. What percentage do you think that covers? Oh, I, I, I'd be afraid to answer. I don't is, know. Is it a couple percent? Do you think it's like 30%? Is it a huge number? Possibly, yeah. Really? That yeah, big? Yeah. Wow. We, we get a printout um, every month prior to meeting that has a list. And it's 10, 12 pages long sometimes of people who have not paid their fire or garbage fees. So are you still picking up the garbage for those individuals? I believe so. I mean... 
You just about you have know, to. Otherwise, yeah, you what are you going to do? Like trash all over the city. Yeah. But rats. It, it, rats, yeah. Uh, but it's you have the folks, to, uh, you have the power uh, to be more aggressive in pursuing the collection, do you not? That I can't answer you. But well, why shouldn't you? Why can't I agree. I find that? Yeah. I agree. But if you don't know the answer, why don't you find out the answer? Sure. I, yeah. I, I need to ask, well, like I said, Mark is right up the street. Yeah. I could ask him, uh, or I can see Andy and ask him. But I don't you know. Have, you have a problem. Uh, if there is a problem, instead of trying to just uh, brush it under the carpet and saying we're not doing enough, do something about it. I agree. Yeah. Well, and maybe putting liens against the house is really all you can do legally, and but then you don't receive those 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 monies until the house is sold yeah. and changes right. hands. Exactly. So, um, you would do eventually, but it could be a ways down the road. I agree. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. can I say? Yeah, I don't know what the legal. Yeah, yeah. I don't know either. That's, yeah. That was my question, right. Mike. Sure. Uh, Parking so, yeah. is always a question when we ask people running for election in the city of Martinsburg for the uh, issues uh, that many feel are a problem. And require a, maybe a grudge or a lot of some sort. Any thoughts on that? If you recognize it as a problem. Prior to me getting on council, there was a study done, and that study showed that a parking garage was not needed. But times have changed. Remember, I got on the, the council in 2008. This was done prior to that. And a lot has happened in those years. 20 years, yeah. yeah. A bit of growth. Um, so I've had, I've had a change of mind, to be honest with you. I, I think that a parking garage is possible, okay? But I th think that what you need is a public-private combination mm -hmm. um, where maybe – you would combine a hotel in the downtown area because there's none in the downtown area, but combine that with a parking garage. Um, the problem is, where are you going to put it? Because if you put it down by the train station, which was my first thought, because if you could get um, Bus Poland's property there, you could have a hotel because it's a train station, sure, and you could have uh, a parking garage there. But people that frequent the square, that have to walk. Mm -hmm. And that's what they don't want. They don't want to have to walk. If they were happy with, with walking, why wouldn't they park in the parking lots that we have now? There, there's um, behind the, the habanero there, there's a parking lot there. Yeah, I don't see very many cars in there. Um, now, the East uh, Burke Street parking lot does get business. And I believe the one um, over by the Apollo, I think that gets um, used a good bit. Another thing that enters my mind is the employees of the businesses downtown, they'll park on the street. Why can't those people park in those parking lots? and walk to their place of employment and that would open up spaces along Queen Street for customers to park. Another thing, people have complained because we raised the, the parking fee uh, on the meters to a quarter an hour. If you have a parking garage, it's going to cost more than a quarter an hour oh, yeah. to park your car in there. When, when we go to Pittsburgh, like I went to Pittsburgh to have my surgery two different times and we had to park uh, we stayed at the William Penn mainly because I had a relative who worked at the William Penn and we, got hotel. A, and we had a significant drop in price for us to stay there <laughs> and it was very nice yes. um, but we had to park in a parking garage underground and um, but about 40 bucks a day I it think, was right? a lot yeah it was a lot so you got to watch what you wish for you got to be careful because these people might want a parking garage but you got and well, they'll complain they're they'll saying it's going to take about 10 million dollars to build something like that and if you're going to charge 
for parking to make up for those costs, it's it's not going to be a dollar an hour. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Dennis, take the microphone and tell people why they should vote for you for re-election to Ward 1. Well, I've been on council since, uh, like I said, 2008. Um, those po folks selected me over uh, two others. Um, I think, I believe, I, I know that I've always voted in the best interest of the city. Um, some of the things that I voted for, they didn't like. But if you look at the overall results, they were, I mean, let me give you an example real quick. Um, the last election, during that election period, we had to raise the water and sewer rates, okay? The information that we were given by uh, Mark Spickler was if we didn't do it then, and that was a terrible time to do it during the campaign, but if we didn't do it then, we would be fined, and I can't remember the amount, um, and if we didn't do it then, if we waited till the next year, it would have been significantly higher than what we had to do then. So I voted for it because I believe that was in the best interest of the citizens. Some people got upset with me for voting for it. But in the long run, it was what was best for those people. And, and, and other things that I've either voted for or against, um, it's actually turned out better for the city. That's why I think I should be reelected. I've always voted for in the best interest of the city. Dennis, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good to see you again. Thanks, Dennis. It's always Dennis. good to see you. Dennis Etherington at 834.